Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can set up AWS Lambda functionality into your Unreal Engine project. AWS Lambda allows you to trigger functions inside of your project and run code using Ruby, Python, Java, Node.js, as well as other languages. Lambda also is great for communicating with other AWS services, such as DynamoDB, to trigger a function to update a table. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a few examples of functions I have written inside of the AWS Lambda interface that can have effective roles in your project, but the possibilities of what this can open up for you are endless. If, you're, if you are looking to purchase Lambda individually, it is available right here on the Unreal Marketplace, but we also offer a package that will give you Blueprint access to Amazon Gamelift, Cognito, Lambda, and DynamoDB, and that package can be used to set up a complete multiplayer backend that I have written full documentation to go along with. All right, so now the first thing we're going to need to do in order to get started is I've already pre-written five functions that we're going to be using inside of our Lambda service that we will be able to invoke from our Unreal Engine project. I have these functions written in both Ruby and Node.js, and I will provide links to each of these languages in the description below. So just go ahead and download one of those, and then we're going to need to upload these functions into an S3 bucket. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create an S3 bucket. I have mine right here, AWS Lambda function code, AP Northeast 2, just the region I was in. But you can go ahead, create bucket, give it whatever name you want. Um, under configure options, I select versioning. I want to keep all versions of, my, of an object. Under permissions, I'm going to block, I'm going to uncheck block all public access so that they can be used. And then go ahead and create that bucket. Once that bucket's created, you're going to go inside that bucket and you're going to upload that uh, zip folder that you downloaded in the, de in the description of this video. And so now our next step is we're going to need to go over to our IAM service, our um, Identity and Access Management, and um, we're going to need to create a new role for our, a for our Lambda service so that it can interact with other AWS services. And so if you look here, I already have my service written and we're going to attach six policies to it. These first two, Amazon DynamoDB full access and Amazon SES full access can just be found by searching because they are um, already created by AWS. And then we're going to need to set up four, sep four managed policies. So if you come over here, like for example, this one, AWS Lambda Tracer access e execution role, it's, I'm going to allow X-Ray to write this uh, AWS Lambda Cognito. I'm going to give Cognito user pools full access. Um, for CloudWatch logs, I'm going to allow writing. And make sure you check the resource I put as well, the resource on which the action can be performed. So like for this one, it's going to be in the logs. And then like AWS Lambda key management service, I'm going to give key management service full access and create that one, create that policy as well. To create these policies, we just come over here to policies and we'll just create a new policy, choose a service. So like if I wanted Cognito, for example, like Cognito user pools like that one and allow all and then review policy or set the resource. So like all resources, review policy, give it a name, give it a description, and then we can attach that policy to our role. So then when we go back to role and we go to our AWS Lambda role that we've created, we'll be able to attach that policy to it. And we're gonna attach these six policies again. So X-ray writing, Cognito user pools, full access, um, CloudWatch logs, writing ability, make sure you set the resource correctly, and then key management service, full access. Uh, you can add your own policies to this role. This is just what I'm going to attach for now because these are the services that at some point I'd like to use with my Lambda service. All right, and now that we have our role set up, let's go ahead and head over to the Lambda service and get these functions set up that, uh, that you downloaded from the, uh, beneath the video earlier. Um, to do this, I'm going to show you how to create a function from scratch. So go ahead and go to create function. We're going to author from scratch. Give it a name. I just named it for you. I'd name it like get latency or for me, I'm going to do get my latency because I already have a function called 
get latents, but um, then you can choose Node.js or Ruby, whichever one you downloaded, and we need to link that role. So use an existing execution role, and let's find AWS Lambda. And now we can create this function, and we can come down to this function, and we can, under code entry type, we can choose upload a file from Amazon S3. And so we can come back over here to our S3 bucket, find our function.zip, and get this object URL right here. Copy that and paste that in right there and save. And then in order for our function to know which function inside of this uh, document to, to run, we're gonna have to go to our handler and we're going to go AWS Lambda dot and so for this example I'm doing the git latents so it'd be git underscore latents and then we can save that and if you look inside this AWS Lambda dot Ruby file you come down here we have this git underscore latents function so that's how it's going to know to run that one if we wanted to run git timestamp you do git underscore aws lambda dot git underscore timestamp and then the final step you need to do inside of each of the functions you're going to write is add in these environment variables which we use as key value pairs that are accessible from inside of the function code uh, so cognito region dynamo db region email sender invitation table ses region user activities table user pool id and i'm just going to use default encryption which is these values here so now I'm going to go ahead and go inside of an Unreal project and show you all how you can use one of those Lambda functions uh, to run inside of your game. Uh, so essentially, I'm going to go inside of my game entry level blueprint. And uh, this is basically, you're going to want to do this before you, you're going to need to create Lambda objects before you're able to use any of the Lambda client functions. So you're going to want to do this before you do anything else. So like the game entry map is the first map you're going to enter other than the Cognito sign in. But before I do anything game lift or um, Lambda or Dynamo DB related, I want to create these objects. And so I'm going to create a Lambda object inside of every single place that I have a fleet so that I can test which fleet is going to be the, the best for me to with the least amount of latency. So for every single fleet location, I'm going to create a Lambda object. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to run a... Basically, I'm going to run through these set of nodes, which is going to set a timestamp and then run my Lambda function, which is going to be a git timestamp in each of my each of my uh, regions that I have a fleet inside of. And um, it's going to return this git timestamp is going to return its own timestamp for how long it takes to run that function in that location. And I'm going to subtract the two values and store that as my latency from the original start timestamp to a uh, the end of this timestamp for how long it took to run this function and basically from that I'll be able to know which which fleet location and which, which is which specific fleet is gonna have the least amount of latency so that if later on down the road I wanted to match make based on least amount of latency I would have it all I would have all the latency values stored and could choose the best one to, uh, for which which fleet location that specific user should join so this was just one way that we could use a Lambda function. The possibilities of the different ideas you could have of different functions you could invoke um, are, are, liter are literally endless. Um, I'd love to see different things that you guys can come up with uh, to invoke Lambda functions and run them. I think this is a very, this is a much easier way that you can now interact Unreal Engine projects with Lambda. I'd also really like to see Lambda working with different AWS services such as Cloud CloudWatch, X-Ray, uh, DynamoDB. The way the way we set up our role so that we we allow it to work with all of those. I think that's where the Lambda service will have its most its biggest impact and and be the most useful is in that sense. And I'd love to see any different ideas that you guys come up with. I just wanted to make this tutorial so that you could get an idea of what was what it took to get started uh, to be able to invoke Lambda functions through blueprints. 
this is all it takes to get started. It's it's a pretty simple process to get them going, and now it's just building off of that um, new and cool ideas. In a future video, I'd like to show you guys how we can set up a full party system, and we'll be using Lambda to invoke different functions um, in conjunction with DynamoDB. I'm first gonna my next video is gonna be a quick DynamoDB sort of like this one, how you can set up DynamoDB and get it working. But uh, I'd like to set up a full party system so that players can invite and join their friends in a lobby and then search for matches all together so, and they'd all be grouped together. But, uh, and I have full documentation on how to do this. And if you came over to blockchopstudios.com and you could coach and you can check out the documentation, you can come right down here. I set up party system with database. I go through Lambda, I go through DynamoDB and then we get to, I show you guys how you can set up a full party system which uses Lambda and DynamoDB together. And I think that'll be a really cool use of these two services uh, in uh, working together and that's uh, a video that I plan to be releasing very shortly.